morning, everyone. Our opening song is out of the glory and praise, which is the larger book, number 571. 571, Church of God. Church of God, chosen people, sing your praise to God. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come, people of God, with joyful song. Praise God, the Father of all. Baptized in Christ, reborn in him, our hearts are filled with joy. He cleanses our sin, renewing our lives. Church of God, chosen people, sing your praise to God. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The church is built with living stones, with Christ as cornerstone. In him we trust who makes us one, uniting us in love. We build on the rock of faith in Christ. Church of God, Chosen people, sing your praise to God. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. On this day where we ask the Lord to sanctify human labor, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of James Ricks and the special intention for Larry Clark. For the times we fail to love God as we should, we bow our heads and ask for his mercy. For God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who have commanded the human race to bear the burden of labor, grant that the work we are beginning may bring progress in this life, and by your favor advance the spread of the kingdom of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. O oh Lord, how I love your law. It is my medi meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. Lord, I love your commands. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my mediation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. Lord, I love your commands. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. 
I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. Lord, I love your commands. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord now upon me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath and Sidon. There are also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. The sanctification of human labor is something that Holy Mother Church has always promoted, and yet most recognition is given to now St. John Paul II in his strong stance against communism in Poland at the time. And it's an encyclical letter that speaks about the importance of human labor. Um, We see that the Holy Father identified that human labor and the right of the human individual are closely connected. And so today, Holy Mother Church invites us, while people have the day off, most people, that we are to recognize that the gift of health and the ability to work is itself a gift from Almighty God. And while we spend most of our life striving for retirement, the reality is the ability to work allows us to provide for our needs. This is a gift from God. This is something that should not be underestimated. And so also, the ability to provide for one's family is not only a responsibility, especially for parents who have children. The importance of going to work is so vital to make sure that their needs and the needs of their spouses are respected. But nonetheless, what's also important is how we see that psychologically we are tied to the work that we do. When I feel that what I am doing is useful, then I am more likely to feel satisfied as a human person. And so we also pray to God for the underemployed and the unemployed, that they will find adequate work to care for their needs and for their families. We also pray for the rights of every worker, 
that they may be dignified, working in a safe environment, paid adequately. And so Holy Mother Church has always been a leader in promoting the dignity of not only the human person, but the dignity of the worker, and how this continues to be somewhat met here in Canada. But globally, we have a lot of work to do. And so we as Catholics need to make sure that we are praying for this, not, oh, I have a good job, so life is good for me. Well, fantastic. But what about everyone else, right? Especially, are we thinking about when we buy things online that we get so cheap from one of these sweatshops overseas? Maybe we should stop purchasing them because if we spend another $10 on the item, it doesn't affect our lives. But imagine if we were to pay people in pick a country, Thailand, and pay them what we would be paying a Canadian worker here in Canada. So we have a responsibility even as consumers to ensure that the dignity of work is respected. So this isn't a John Paul II thing. This is a Catholic Church thing because it's a God thing. So may we, as we pray for the sanctification of labor, not just think of our own work and those of people we know, but to continue to ask God to bless all people so that they may have jobs to provide for their families and to also allow them to have the dignity of the human person. With humility, we bring to our merciful Father our own intentions and that of the world. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the universal Catholic Church that Jesus may be our guide. In using our gifts to build up the body of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for leaders throughout the world. May the spirit of truth prompt us to promote peace and prosperity among all people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctification of all work, that those who are employed, underemployed, or unemployed may find adequate work to provide for their needs and that of their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the rights of every worker, that each person may work in a safe environment where their person is respected, where they work hard, and that they show respect to their fellow colleagues, employers, and those under them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our great diocese, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered here, may the Holy Spirit help us to recognize Jesus in one another, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially James, the holy souls in purgatory, and all who have died. May they soon be at peace in the heavenly kingdom with the angels and saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. Loving Father, we bring these prayers to you, entrusting them to your care. Please answer them according to your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Amen. O God, who in the offerings presented here, nourish the human race with food and renew it with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humanity in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. By Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servant James, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with St. John Paul II, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of this table of unity and charity, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that through the work you have given us to do, we may sustain our life here on earth and trustingly build up your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Under thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. As heirs of Christ, redeemed by love, we wait for his return. A priestly people offering praise to God, the source of hope. For Jesus is Lord, our Savior and God. Church of God, chosen people, sing your praise to God. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As water springing from the rock once brought God's people life, the living water given by Christ creates our lives anew. So come, you who thirst to springs of new life. Church of God, chosen people, sing your praise to God. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God bless you. Have a good day.